Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome back to the RWGresearch.com laboratory. Today, we're going to be talking about the cheesy fan. So, just sit back, relax, I'm just going to explain everything. Little video here, a lot of pictures there, some voiceover. And, uh, yeah, let's get started. Another fun fact. If it's dead, you can just start it by hand. It'll run for another few minutes. And the fun begins. The first thing I had to do is make a tape dispenser. So this is six inch wide tape. Made a little dispenser and that's a green thing. There's a weight just to hold it in place. Pull it out, cut it off, and then flip it over. Put some, uh, well first I put some little pieces on there and put it on the vacuum table so it sealed the rest of the vacuum bed. Here's just a few pictures of the coils being made. You can see I have some squirrely wires there. I made adjustments to fix that. Got everything configured really well. Started making some really good looking coils. And then once I got comfortable with that, then I started uh, repeating the process. So I actually ended up making 50 of these coils. Here you can see uh, that I added a full 10 pound spool and added some uh, attachments to the coil winder to get everything functioning properly. Seems to work. Looks kind of funny, but that doesn't matter. Here was the first test coil. I tried to put glue on there and peel the tape off and that just didn't seem to work. So then I went on to the laminating test. I used different thickness lamina lamination material and uh, ran it through different ways. Here's a old coil versus new coil, what I was going to build versus what I ended up building. The bigger coil is the finished coil. So here I'm using um, different thickness laminations. You can see how I got the wire in the middle there. So I cut the middle out just to do some tests and uh, this seems to work pretty well. I used it a uh, manila envelope, stuck it in there that way try different ways, um, different thickness laminations. That's 0.1 mil, or 0.1 mil lamination material. And then I also used 3 mil lamination material. The 1 mil was so hard to work with, I ended up just using uh, the thicker stuff because it was only a fraction thicker, as you can see right here. About, uh, what is that, about 0.6 millimeter, 0.06 millimeter difference. So um, yeah, there's a bunch of tests there and then I went on to mocking up exactly how I was going to put this together. So I 3D printed out the uh, parts and assembled the magnet array. All 3D printed stuff there. These are 8mm skateboard style bearings. And um, I ended up putting different tape on there. This is older pictures from the build. But the shaft goes through there. It works well. So here are some of the coils I started building. Those are a few that failed. I figured out why later and then uh, fixed that and then went from there. So here's uh, just some of the coils that I printed that I ended up basically pulling that center wire out, laying it on the tape in the right uh, length, and then cutting the tape out. And I left the tape on there again because getting, uh, getting things out of there was a little more tricky than I expected. So I figured leaving the tape on was the most consistent so I knew everything had the same dielectric strength and everything like this because the tape is consistent but if I put glue on there it would not work very well. So this is just pre-configuration for setting up for lamination. So the wire in the middle has to go and stay in the middle so that's why I taped it to the tape and then cut that out because it couldn't go through the center. You can see the center wire there. That's the loop I purposefully placed and then pulled out. So there they all are. That's uh, almost, oh, that's 50 of them there, I believe. And that wire you see there is only the wire coming out of the outside. The inside wire is not coming out of there yet. Crap ton of wires, let me tell you. But uh, well worth the effort. So as you can see, I went on to making a little paper jig there and I just cut all the lamination sheets in half, peeled it back, stuck it on my little jig, and then put the coil in the right spot, used the tape to kind of hold it in place, folded it back down, and then put it in the uh, manila envelope. It's a double manila envelope. I did that to keep the coil as flat as possible, but I actually had to run these through the laminator a second time because I wanted to heat the copper really hot, 
and melt everything very well. So there's the setup. And then you can see the uh, paper jig, how I kind of got it on there. And you can see the wire in the middle of the lamination on the backing. Now this laminator has been modified with a drill um, step-down gearbox. And it actually runs about 10 times slower than normal. And it runs backwards because I wanted the heat to uh, have time to heat up the copper and melt the lamination. I actually used this uh, for P PB PCB manufacturing, so I had to make it get the copper real hot. There's a good shot of the copper in the middle. You can see how I coiled it up in there to get it through the laminator. And uh, yeah, there they all stacked up. I believe that's all 50 of them right there. That is a lot of wire. That's just the wire coming out of the ends. The other two wires on each coil is still in the center. It's about one inch thickness. Um, and uh, I can't complain. The lamination took a while. It took almost two and a half to three minutes per coil to run through the laminator, not including the rest of it. And then I went back and peeled off the uh, lamination material and exposed that wire, pulled the wire out, and then uh, stacked all the coils. And there they are, all stacked with the center wires and the outside wires pulled out. So that's 200 wires right there. Just a few, definitely a few wires. But like I said, it has to be uh, specifically built for the purpose I'm trying to achieve. Now I used the Mylar, which is laminating film. So that's one reason I used Mylar, because it's a really good dielectric and used in uh, capacitors. So I actually punched four holes, one on each corner, and this was to make the coil as precise as possible after laminating, because that process wasn't perfectly in the center of my sheet all the time. So this allowed me to align the coil in the specific spot that I wanted it in, and that way all the coils are on top of each other exactly where they should be, on top of the next one, on top of the next one. So there's the little jig with the four holes, and I just used a hand a hand punch um, and there's a close-up shot of the holes and then a pile of just some of the punches I got out of there and then mocked it up here and drilled the holes in the wood those are actually straws holding everything together funny enough I looked through all my shafts boxes and I found four just four and only four straws for like little coffee straws and they are a perfect fit for those holes and they uh, are strong enough and flexible enough to kind of manipulate uh, or squeeze together or whatever through the hole if they don't quite fit tight or fit right they're tight so there it is all together with all the wires hanging out then I cut some uh, prefer um, solder solderable pref board and put them on that so here is an interesting thing I did I didn't want to strip all these wires it take me like two weeks to strip all these things literally so I actually uh, found some people you can buy these type of acid uh, strippers for the wires and I ended up using a heat gun and the sulfuric acid out of a style of Drano cleaner um, it's not lye this is sulfuric acid and it's a little different and it's kind of kind of wasn't the perfect solution but it worked really well stripped it off and then uh, cleaned them up and uh, here's what they look like all right well the Drano cleaner seemed like it worked pretty well sulfuric acid I heated it up to you know make it go faster you can see how clean those are came off nice the problem is is uh, I needed to scrub them off I didn't want to leave it in there too long and let it work its way up the wire so I just scrubbed it off and uh, neutralized it with baking soda and water and uh, washed it really really good a few times with that and yeah let's go tend those babies so yeah, just tend them up uh, with the uh, soldering iron. I took the soldering iron and just put some uh, solder on it and then took some flux and make sure it was well, well fluxed. I dipped the wire every time in the flux and just dragged it through the solder blob and well, tend them up. They look really good. Can't complain at all. And uh, I would say that's a good solution if you had to do what I did, but uh, you know it is some pretty strong acid and it's actually extremely dangerous so here I went ahead and uh, took those breadboards those solder solderable breadboards and uh, I had to use this strip here at the end and tend them all and I needed to use the end like that because I wanted the gap I actually needed the space uh, if I didn't have the space I was kinda concerned about arc over so I wanted a little bit of extra space so I had to use that style 
here's a couple of the snippets I took. Each wire is the same length, everything is the same length, so that I have the same resistances, the same impedances, the same everything, down to a pretty strict science, so I know exactly what I've got when I'm looking at it. So I actually ended up adding four more boards because I realized I only had half of the wires done and I had filled up the four I put on there. I don't know what happened, I miscalculated. But I grabbed four more and you can see here I started assembling it. It was a bit tricky to get all the wires right but I had labeled things and stuff. Here is I put hot glue on the end after I soldered them so that when I re-soldered to that joint it the wire didn't move. This kept everything nice to make sure I didn't break the wire off when moving stuff around. Yeah I worked on it in the kitchen table quite a bit. That's how I got most of this stuff accomplished and um, then I actually took a heat shrink tubing. Took the heat shrink tubing and cut it. Oh here you go real quick. This these are all the uh, close-up shots of the 200 wires coming off that guy. It's freaking crazy. But I took heat shrink tubing and I slit it um, with actually a stitcher cutter for my wife's sewing kit and uh, taped them little pieces on there after I got everything together to make it nice and organized and just make sure the wires didn't short out. That's what I was actually most concerned about. So that's why I uh, kind of cleaned it up and made it nice so I just make sure things didn't short out where I couldn't see them and have issues in that uh, in that way but yeah I got all these connected and then from there I had to do all the interconnections after I tested and made sure all the polarities were correct in order to cut all the wires to length I just wrapped them around this piece of plastic and then took a uh, razor blade and basically just cut them at the right length right on top and then I just unfolded them and then I actually took my pair of uh, side cuts that were pretty ruined and just uh, filed out a little extra notch so they fit the wire just perfectly and that was my wire stripper. If I wanted shorter wires I would just basically cut on both sides of that plastic thing instead of one and then they were perfectly half lengths so that worked out wonderfully. Interconnections, I got it all done, it looked amazing and then I realized I needed to draw this on the whiteboard and look at it again because I, even though they were connected in series they were not connected in aiding series mode they were connecting in canceling series mode silly me so I unsoldered them all and then I re-soldered them all correctly and uh, this is just straight from coil to the next coil to the next coil in by filer fashion like you see in Tesla's pancake coil um, so got all those wired up and this is how it was for the uh, pulse motor build off here I'm just testing it on some uh, lithium iron phosphate batteries because if I shorted something out the little controllers on those boards would quit putting out power so it was kind of a safety there's a little solder bead safety gap flash over arc over safety gap that I just always will have across the coils little holder for a reed switch and um, Everything seemed to work pretty well. I was happy with this. This was just the beginning to make sure it ran and just to make sure it was doing what it was supposed to before I started my experimentation, which you'll start seeing in the next couple of videos, which is the reason I built it, to test a theory about coils with high capacitance. It's a very specific reason why I built this thing. There's my daughter and my son. They were just playing around with the... Uh, <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. Here, running it on super caps, and that's about it for the build. All right, well, now I'm going to get uh, some clips here. I'm just going to show you some clips of unused stuff I didn't have time to fit into the pulse motor build off video. All right, real quickly before we go on, we're at 200 volts up there on the top of the screen right there, and you can see the current in the blue pulsing, and the yellow line is the voltage. So let me zoom in and get you actually see what one of those little spikes looks like. So there's what one of those little spikes look like. It's a mess. I've got it on there for efficiency purposes right now. So here you can see all the wires coming out of this side, terminating down here on these strips in the back. And then on this side, I have the center of the winding coming out of the center, going around and uh, also to the back of these boards. These boards are just housing the wires. I've got extra room for anything else. And then I've got all my interconnections here, which there are quite a few of them. And uh, then it's just running on this little cap. And uh, I'll show you the voltage dropping. It's pretty subtle. It doesn't really drop very much, very fast. Right now I'm in efficiency mode. I can run this at a, light, a lot higher RPM and uh, even generate on the second cycle. 
but uh, right now I'm just demonstrating what it is, how it is running on this small cap, and yeah, awesome sauce, I love it so far. I actually built this for purposes of demonstrating what I've been learning with Newman's work, and this is a very complicated system to build, but very simplistic at its finest when you get down to the nitty gritty. So thanks for watching, God bless you guys, hope you guys had a great pulse motor build off. This thing stressed my time out pretty far. It is like been consuming every ounce of my efforts. So awesome. I just noticed something. You probably aren't going to be able to hear this, but up here, these speakers are actually popping. So it's definitely throwing off some RF. All right, well, thanks for watching, and uh, we'll see you uh, in the next video when I start doing more complicated tests with this thing. Right now I wanted to just prove its workability, make it work. Later I'm going to do some regen stuff and all kinds of fun things, but right now I'm not even recovering the energy that is in the charging and discharging of the coils. It is just going to waste, so yeah, lots of things to still do to this thing. Well, thanks for watching. Uh, the videos will continue on this project. I have so many different ideas to try and lots of things to learn and got a big theory built behind why I'm trying to construct this and build it the way I am and all that will very slowly but surely come out in the uh, upcoming videos so be sure to subscribe hang out thumbs up thumbs down whatever you wish to do we'll see you in the next one bye watch oh wow bubbly <laughs> So neutralizing the acid baking soda so I can not burn myself I got a tiny tiny bit of a dot on my arm here and a dot on my arm there without noticing and she burns <laughs>